Everybody and uh, welcome to the Gospel Minute Live. I'm Steve Toby, and today is November the 6th, and it's the feast day of Paul the Confessor, the Patriarch of Constantinople. And he was a uh, uh, big opposer to the Arians, and uh, he was persecuted very severely by the, uh, by the Arians. In fact, they killed him. They killed him. So, our Apolitikion for Paul the Confessor, thy confession of the one divine faith showed thee to the church to be a new Paul and a zealot among priests, O Holy One. The righteous blood both of Abel and Zachary with thee doth cry out together unto the Lord. Righteous Father, intercede with Christ God in our behalf that his great mercy may be granted to all of us. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. How you doing, folks? Good to see you. Well, let's go over and uh, we'll hear our uh, evening scriptures from your friend and mine, Kurt Lytle. Good evening, Kurt. Good evening, Steve. Good evening, everyone. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Illumine our hearts, O Master, who loves mankind with the pure light of the divine knowledge. Open the eyes of our mind to the understanding of thy gospel teachings. And plant also in us the fear of thy blessed commandments, that trampling down all carnal desires, we may enter into a spiritual manner of living, both thinking and doing such things as are well-pleasing unto thee. For thou art the illumination of our souls and bodies, O Christ our God. And unto thee we ascribe glory, together with thy Father who is from everlasting, and in all holy good and life-creating spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our psalm this evening is psalm number four. It's found on page 683 of your Orthodox Study Bibles. The notes for Psalm 4 says that Psalm 4 emphasizes the end. Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone who believes. And he is the Alpha and the Omega, Omega the beginning and the end. He exhorts people not to be slow of heart and not to love vain things or to seek after lies. Rather, they should realize that the Lord, who is the Father, has made his Holy One, who is Christ, to be wondrous in his death and re resurrection. The church in her prayers uses the Psalm 4 as a prochemonium at Vespers on Mondays. It is also one of the Psalms of the Great Compline during Great Lent. Psalm 4. You heard me when I called, O God of my righteousness. You strengthened my heart when I was in distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long, O you sons of men, will you be slow of heart? Why do you love vain things and seek after lies? Know that the Lord made his Holy One wondrous. The Lord will hear me when I cry to him. Be angry and do not sin. Have remorse upon your beds for what you say in your hearts. Offer the sacrifice of righteousness and hope in the Lord. There are many who say, who will show us good things? O Lord of light, your face was stamped upon us. You put gladness in my heart. From their season of wheat, wine, and oil, they were multiplied. I will both sleep and rest in peace. For you alone, O Lord, cause me to dwell in hope. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <laughs> and our epistle this evening is taken from St. Paul's letter uh, to the Hebrews, chapter 8, verses 1 through 6, found on page 1662 of your Orthodox Study Bibles. Now this is the main point of the things we are saying. We have such a high priest who is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in the heavens, a minister of the sanctuary and of the true tabernacle which the Lord erected, and not man. For every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. Therefore, it is necessary that this one also have something to offer. 
For if he were on earth, he would not be a priest, since there are priests who offer the gifts according to the law, who serve the copy and the shadow of the heavenly things, as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle. For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown to you on the mountain. But now he has obtained a more excellent ministry, as much as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which is established on better promises. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And our gospel this evening is taken from the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 12, verses 8 through 12. Found on page 1391 of your Orthodox Study Bibles. Let us attend. Also I say to you, whoever confesses me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before men will be denied before the angels of God. And anyone who speaks a word against the Son of Man, it will be forgiven him. But to him who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. Now when they bring to you the in, bring you to the synagogues and magistrates and authorities, do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say. For the Holy Spirit will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say. The word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you, Steve. We'll see you tomorrow night. I'll be here. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Kurt. So let's say hello to everybody here before we go on with our Bible study. Joanne, uh, Johnny Milburn, good evening to you. Catherine Houston, good evening. Vicki Winter, good evening. And Violetta, good evening to you. And over here, let me get this out of the way a little bit. There we go. Jonathan Nichols, good evening, my brothers and sisters in Christ. Paul Collins, hello to all and God bless. Joycey Marie, good mo evening to you. I almost said good morning. And over here, Wilson Salviejo, Lena May, good evening. Christina Hunter, good evening. You haven't sent me that email, Christina. Let me see. Oh, but you did send me our daily meditation. And I'm trying to figure out how to say it. Elder Amphilokohias of Patmos. Well, he writes, I was born to love people. It doesn't concern me if he is a Turk, black, or white. I see in the face of each person the image of God. And for this image of God, I am willing to sacrifice everything. Amen. That's beautiful. And actually, that, uh, that has relevance to one of the questions we're going to have on Sunday night. Um, so, it's, it's, sometimes it's hard to love the, uh, people who have done you great wrong or are doing great wrongs and see the image of God in them. So, we'll be cons that's one of our questions on Sunday night. So, and how do we pronounce Amphila? Amphilokius, Amphilokius of Patmos, Elder. Joanne Manaski, good evening to you. Marianne Russell, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Steve, uh, J. J. Russell, good evening, Steve, and everyone. Christ is in our midst. He is now and ever shall be. May God bless and protect us all. Lord, help us to trust in you with all our hearts and lean not on our own understandings. Lord, have mercy. Amen. Thank you, Jay. Nellie Cardvelli, Stefan Bennett, Robin Armstrong. Good evening, friends. Frances is home from her surgery. Tired, made it through for, uh, first doctor appointment afterward. Great, good news. Thank you, Lord, for letting uh, Frances, after her surgery this past Monday, come home. Thank you. And Jay Russell, once again, prayers for God's blessings Healing grace and protection for Claire, Brandy, Lena May, Albert, Karen, and Nellie. Lord, please heal all their infirmities and relieve their pain, suffering, stress, and anxiety. Lord, have mercy. Amen. And Mother Elizabeth, good evening. On the eve of St. Dimit 
Demetrius and St. Tabitha, arise. Thank you. And uh, let me see, Nellie, good evening. And Christina says, oops, I will, thank you. And Joseph Khalil with our evening uh, uh, Bible verse. And let me see here. And this one is taken from Isaiah chapter 54, verse 10. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, who has compassion on you. Amen. Doesn't matter what's going to happen. He's not going to, matter. He's not going to uh, stop loving us. He's not going to stop. So, and he has a covenant with us. He does. It's like a contract. He's going to keep his end of the bargain. It's up to us to keep our end of the bargain. Amen. Okay. And Eleone Shannara, good evening to you. So I think we've said hello to everybody, so let's go to our Bible study. And uh, last night we left St. Paul, or actually we were seeing him leave Corinth. He'd been there for a year and a half around the year 51 or 52. And um, he'd been there for a year and a half building up that church, a very troubled church, as a matter of fact. And, um, but he's going to leave. He's going to leave. Um, and we're going to, I think this is a repeat from last night, but there's something I want to bring up about it. And for context-wise, it's okay to repeat. So we're going to start at Acts chapter 18, verse 18. Acts chapter 18, verse 18. So Paul still remained a good while. He's in Corinth, remember. Then he took leave of the brethren and sailed for Syria with Priscilla and Aquila, and they were with him. He had his hair cut off at Sincrea, for he had taken a vow. Uh, if we go to uh, Numbers, is it? Uh, let me see. Yeah, Numbers uh, chapter 6. Uh, we're going to find out what a Nazarite uh, vow is. And that's when you dedicate yourself to God for a certain period of time. You don't cut your hair. You take a vow that your life, at least for a certain, usually two, three, four weeks, you dedicate yourself entirely to God. We might call it a retreat in our language, where we go to a monastery or something and devote ourselves to prayer and etc. Well, uh, a wonderful example of what I think of someone who took a Nazarite vow, but this guy took it for life, was St. John the Baptist. And, uh, but Paul takes a vow here. He doesn't cut his hair. Um, so, let's go on. And that's part of the vow, not to cut your hair, not to take strong drink, etc. So he came to Ephesus, and he left them there, but he himself entered the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. When they asked him to stay a longer time with them, he did not consent, but took leave of them, saying, I must by all means keep this coming feast in Jerusalem, that would be the Passover, but I will return to you, God willing. And he sailed from Ephesus. So he goes to Ephesus, he teaches for a while in the synagogue. And uh, they wanted him to stay longer. Now, Paul realizes that uh, Ephesus is a very, very important city. I told you last night. And there it is right there, Ephesus. And Ephesus, as I told you, is a major seaport. And if you wanted to bring goods to the interior of Asia Minor, all this area in here, you brought your goods to Ephesus if you were coming from Rome or Greece to Ephesus, unload them there, and then using the really good Roman roads, uh, load your, uh, your cargo, your goods, on animals or carts or wagons, and then using the good Roman roads, bring them to the interior of uh, Asia Minor, which is now Turkey. And uh, each of these destinations... Um, was a, a, a good-sized city, a good-sized city. And uh, from Ephesus, he could preach the gospel, 
and the gospel would be carried by uh, the merchants who were going into the interior of the country, and that's exactly what happened. But all that comes a little bit later when he really goes back to Ephesus and works hard there. So, um, Paul leaves Ephesus and he goes down to Caesarea, which is not on our map, but it's in here somewhere, right here, right in here. And uh, from there he'll go to Antioch or to, uh, and then Jerusalem. So when he had landed at Caesarea and gone up and greeted the church, he went down to Antioch. Okay, and Antioch's right there. And Jerusalem, uh, let me get out of the way here. Well, I'll move the, I'll move our map. There we go. So, this is all the Holy Land in here, Israel. Okay, down in here. Antioch's way up here in Syria. So, he's in Antioch, reports to the church there. That's his home church that he and St. Peter established. Okay. Um... And after he had spent some time there, he departed and went over to the region of Galatia and Phrygia in order, uh, strengthening all the disciples in those cities. Now, a certain name, Jew named Apollos, born at Alexandria down in Egypt, uh, an eloquent man and mighty in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and being fervent in spirit, he spoke and taught accurately the things of the Lord, though he knew only the baptism of John. What does that mean, the baptism of John? Well, John's baptism was uh, a baptism of repentance, repentance. And uh, it was the Jewish form of baptism or uh, a, a purification, a self-purification. So, that wasn't the baptism that we know, okay? So, but he only knew the baptism of John. So, he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Aquila and Priscilla heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. And when he desired to cross to Achaia, and uh, Achaia, as we know, is over here in that area, which is just a little bit north of Corinth. Okay. So, and when he desired to cross to Achaia, the brethren wrote, exhorting the disciples to receive him. And when he arrived, he greatly helped those who had believed through grace. For he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Okay, a couple of things. First, Aquila and Priscilla take him aside. His knowledge um, of Christ and of baptism and the whole gospel is incomplete. So they take him aside privately so as not to embarrass him. And they go ahead and fill him in about the gospel, about baptism, and all of those things. The key is they did it discreetly. They did it gently, respectfully. They took him aside privately so as not to embarrass him. That's a good lesson for each one of us that uh, when we think someone is wrong and uh, take them aside, whatever it is, whether it's religion or whether it's our daily lives. Okay, we take them aside privately. We don't want to embarrass them. You know, every morning in our morning prayers, we pray, that we may not embarrass other people. We pray that every morning in our morning prayers. And this is a wonderful example given to us um, by St. Luke in the Acts of the Apostles, how Aquila and Priscilla took Apollos aside. So, and the second thing I wanted to bring up in that, and, uh, oh, for he vigorously refuted the Jews publicly, showing from the scriptures that Jesus is the Christ. Now, we've been over this before, but what scriptures is he talking about? The only scriptures, there was no New Testament. Remember, this is about the year 52. Maybe we're into 53 now. Maybe. There is no 
no written uh, scriptures for us. Saint Matthew and Saint uh, Mark won't write won't write their gospels into the sixties. So that's ten years down the road. There are no Christian scriptures at this time. In fact, the Christian scriptures you might say are at that time were the Old Testament. So he's taken the Old Testament, the Old Covenant. And he's showing through those scriptures, the Old Testament, that Jesus is the Christ. Amen. And we hear of Paul doing the same thing, always up in Berea, when he quoted from the scriptures. Those Bereans, they went back through their scriptures, looking, making sure that what he was saying was true. They were fact-checking him in the scriptures. So Paul used the scriptures, um, just like our example here of Apollos, the Old Testament, to show that uh, Jesus is the Christ. And so now people will ask, well, why do we even read the Old Testament? We have the New Testament. Well, a couple of things. You can prove through the Old, uh, Old Testament that Jesus is the Christ. And... The New Testament is not complete without the Old Testament. So, okay. Going on to chapter 19, verse 1. Um, so we're in Acts chapter 19, verse 1. And it happened while Apollos was at Corinth. And we'll read about Apollos uh, and 1 Corinthians being at Corinth in chapter 1 that Paul, having passed through the upper regions, came to Ephesus. So he's um, back in Ephesus now, St. Paul. And finding some disciples, he said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? So they said to him, We have not so much as heard whether there is a Holy Spirit. They didn't know that there was a Holy Spirit. And he said to them, and to what then were you baptized? So they said, into John's baptism. Then Paul said, John indeed baptized with a baptism of repentance, saying to the people that they should believe on him who would come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke with tongues and prophesied. Now the men were all, or about 12 in all. There were about 12 of them in all. Now I want to go back to this. They didn't even know about the Holy Spirit. Now, uh, I've run into Orthodox Christians, cradle Orthodox Christians who are in their 40s, 50s. And they ask, where, where did this Holy Spirit come from? What is this Holy Spirit? And this is regular church going every Sunday. Orthodox Christians who make the sign of the cross in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 40, 50 years old, and they've been in the Orthodox Church their whole lives. And it makes you wonder what we're teaching our children and what we're teaching our catechumens. That they don't even know these basic questions, some of them. So, and I'm sure that that's probably an exception, but if there's one exception, there's probably more out there. So, going on. Paul is going to spend two years in Ephesus. Two years. That's how important this church is. Because, as I said, through this church, he opens up the whole interior of Asia Minor, Turkey today. And he'll preach the gospel there. And the gospel will be carried by merchants and uh, uh, laborers and what have you. All throughout. All throughout Asia Minor. So, and he went into the synagogue and spoke boldly for three months. So he's in Ephesus. He's going to be there for two years. First thing he does... You got it. He goes to the synagogue and he preaches in the synagogue. He teaches in the synagogue. And um, so he went 
into the synagogue and boldly spoke for three months, reasoning and persuading concerning the things of the kingdom of God. But when some were hardened and did not believe, but spoke evil of the way, evil of the way, that's what the early church was called. It wasn't called the Christian church. It was called the way. W-A-Y. But spoke evil, those Jews spoke evil of the way before the multitude. He departed from them and withdrew the disciples, reasoning daily in the school of Tyrannus. What he did is he went out and rented a hall and taught there every day. After three months teaching in the synagogue, they didn't want to hear any more from him. They hardened their hearts toward him. So, okay, goes down the street, rents a hall, and uh, he teaches there. And this continued for two years, so that all who dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks, that is, Jews and Gentiles. So, Now, we're going to go into a little bit more depth tomorrow about uh, St. Paul in, in Ephesus. Okay? But that's for tomorrow. So tomorrow, mark your Bibles. We'll be starting at uh, chapter 19 of the book of Acts, uh, verse 11. Tomorrow. Mark your Bibles. Put a sticky note. And you can open right up to it. So, You know, by the way, if anyone has any questions about, uh, as we're going through this little Bible study of ours every night, or at least five nights a week. If you got a question, put it in. You know, it can help everybody out. Okay. And. Okay. So, let us, uh, let's say our evening prayers. Let's go to our icon corner, get rid of our map. There we go. And we'll go to our icon corners and say our evening prayers together. So let's pray together, folks. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Glory to thee, our God, glory to thee. O heavenly King, O Comforter, the Spirit of truth, who art in all places and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O gracious Lord. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy, mighty, holy, immortal, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. All Holy Trinity, have mercy on us. Lord, cleanse us from our sins. Master, pardon our iniquities. Holy God, visit and heal our infirmities, for thy name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Now that the day has come to a close, I thank thee, O Lord, and I ask that the evening with the night may be sinless. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Now that the day is past, I glorify thee, O Master, and I ask that the evening with the night may be without offense. Grant this to me, O Savior, and save me, both now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Now that the day has run its course, I praise thee, O Holy One, and I ask that the evening with the night may be undisturbed. Grant this to, my, to me, O Savior, and save me. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. O Lord our God, if during this day I have sinned, whether in word or deed or thought, forgive me all, for thou art good and lovest mankind. 
grant me peaceful and undisturbed sleep, and deliver me from all influence and temptation of the evil one. Raise me up again in proper time, that I may glorify thee, for thou art blessed with thine only begotten Son and thine all Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the Son of God, the only begotten, begotten of the Father before all worlds, light of light, true God of true God, begotten, not made of one essence with the Father by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. O Christ our God, who at all times and in every hour in heaven and on earth art worshipped and glorified, who art long-suffering, merciful, and compassionate, who lovest the just and showest mercy upon the sinner, who callest all to salvation through the promise of blessings to come, O Lord, in this hour receive our supplications and direct our lives according to thy commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, Deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress. Encompass us with thy holy angels, that guided and guarded by them we may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of thine unapproachable glory. For thou art blessed unto ages of ages. Amen. And now it's time to add our own intentions. Uh, so, dear Lord, our dear friends, if you have a prayer request, put it in the comment section and we will be sure to pray for it with you. Amen. So, Lord, we ask that you remember those that we are about to pray for this evening. And Melita Green asks to pray for her sister Miriam, who suffers from uh, emotional problems, dear Lord. We ask that you heal her. Um, Jolene, or uh, Joyce Marie, asks to pray for Jolene, that she comes closer to you, dear Lord, and that uh, all is well with her. We pray for Jolene. We pray for Angel who has uh, cancer, dear Lord, and uh, boy, I just had an update on her. Oh, she had the PET scan, and uh, the PET scan says no new cancers, although there's some question about whether she has cancer in her lungs or not. Well, she's going to start chemotherapy uh, later this month, and uh, we pray, dear Lord, that through that chemotherapy, you cure her, you heal her. We pray for that. Amen. Carmen Elrod asked to pray for a little seven-year-old Slater Bushman, that you keep him free of cancer, dear Lord. And we pray for uh, Carmen's son and his young family as they come back to the faith, Lord, and that they raise their two children, their children um, in a godly life. We pray for that. And we pray for the health of Carmen's four small grandchildren. We pray for Curtis, Carmen's uh, husband. He has, he's in a lot of pain, dear Lord. We pray that you relieve him of his pain and grant him a healing. Amen. Robin Armstrong asks to pray for Frances. She's been diagnosed with cancer. She had surgery on, Mo on Monday, and she's now home. Thank you, Lord. We pray. We thank you for that. And uh, we pray that she recovers quickly, and we pray for a healing for her. Uh, we continue to pray for Robin's mother and father for their physical and emotional needs, dear Lord. We pray for Malia, a 15-year-old girl, who suffers from a brain tumor and complications of that brain tumor, Lord. And we pray, dear Lord, for Malia. Camilla Raymond asks us to pray for her. And Lord, we pray that she stays uh, focused, and diligent, and receives your uh, divine insight and guidance as she works on her dissertation. 
We pray that you continue to uh, favor her in her uh, uh, teaching position at the university. And we pray for her health, for the health of uh, Camilla's children. And we pray for her uh, father and stepmother. I think I got that right. For her father and stepmother. Uh, for their health, dear Lord. And they have some big decisions to make concerning their health, dear Lord. We pray that you give them guidance. Amen. Oh, Anna asked to pray for uh, Tyler, 12-year-old little boy who suffers from a brain tumor, dear Lord. And we pray that you relieve his uh, suffering and bring healing to him. We pray for Oh, Anna and her daughter, Maria, that they find peace and understanding between the two of them. Marley Fralick asked to pray for Nancy, her mother, who's in a rehab now. She took a fall and hit her head. And uh, she'd been a little groggy, dear Lord. So we pray that uh, you step in and, and give her a healing and return her to good health. We pray for that. And we pray for the uh, Fralick family, that you protect them, Lord, from the coronavirus. Mother Elizabeth asked to pray for a family adopting three children from that area between Russia and Ukraine. And we pray, dear Lord, for their success. We pray for the health of Father Benjamin Henderson. He had the heart attack and surgery. We pray for a healing and recovery for him. David Sauls asked to pray for the health of his mother, Irene. Joseph Khalil asked to pray for Toby, his son, that uh, he comes closer to you, Lord, and receives your guidance. We pray for that. We pray for Joseph, uh, Joseph's other son, Luke. We pray that you protect Luke from all infections, dear Lord. We pray for Annabelle and Gabriella. We pray for uh, Joseph's mother, Rania, or Odette, I'm sorry. We pray for Joseph's mother, Odette, that she be healed from her cancer. We pray for Rania, Joseph's wife, for healing for her and bring her back to good health. She's been having a, uh, some extra problems, dear Lord, lately, so we pray for her, especially this evening. And we pray for Joseph's entire family, and we pray for the health of Doug Fall as well. Jonathan Nichols asked to pray for him and for his health. And Lord, we thank you for that good MRI uh, that he got. Um, no new cancers. And uh, we, we thank you so much for that. He's now six months being cancer-free. Amen. Meredith Beckley asked to pray for Katie, Jake, and Addie, and we pray for the whole Beckley family. Brandy and Philip asked to pray for Tracy and George. And Lord, we pray for Brandy that you bring about a healing for Brandy. She suffers from a serious health condition, and we pray for healing for her. We pray for her husband, Philip, that you comfort and console him. You're very anxious about Brandy's health, dear Lord, and we pray that they stay strong in their faith, and that uh, you relieve uh, Philip of his anxiety. And we pray for uh, Brandy's brother, Kevin, that he comes closer to you and makes better decisions in his life. We pray for Brandy and Kevin's father, who suffers from a suffered from a stroke, dear Lord. He's recovering now. We thank you for the progress that he has made. We pray for Brandy's project to establish an Orthodox mission in her corner of Wyoming. Very badly needed, dear Lord. Very badly needed. And uh, Marianne Russell asked to pray for Kathy, and for Violet, and for uh, Louise, who suffers from heart failure. Uh, Colleen asked to pray for the health of Marie and her husband. And Phil Collins asked to pray for the health of Dee. Daniel Duran asked to pray for Gail. And uh, Catherine Salcedo asked to pray for little Izio that he grows up with faith in, in you, dear Lord. And we have the same prayer for all of our children. Mother Elizabeth asked to pray for Larissa, for the Klippa family, for the health of John, for the health of Father Theodorus, and for Heraclius Smith. And we pray for Mother um, Elizabeth's ministry down there in Flagler County, dear Lord, Florida. Philip asked to pray for the health of Rosie. Marianne Russell asked to pray for Barbara, Jeffrey, and Anne Hubiak. And Kathy Zansis asked to pray for Sophia, her daughter, and her mother, Anastasia, for their health. Debbie Owens asked to pray that life be a little less stressful for her, both at work and at home. We pray for her. We pray for the whole Owen family, especially Gio and Jordan, dear Lord, that they make better decisions and come closer to you. For this we pray. Amen. And we pray for... Uh, Yelena, friend of Debbie's, who's in a great deal of pain, Lord, 
And we pray that you relieve her pain and relieve her uh, dependence on her pain medications. Catherine Houston asked to pray for John, David, for her son Brandon and Brandon's wife Nicole. We pray for the health of Lexi. She has health problems coupled with uh, uh, the COVID-19, dear Lord. We pray that you heal her and that she only has a mild case of the COVID. We pray for that and a quick recovery. We pray for Nicholas, Tiffany, Gary, Rebecca, and Taylor, Catherine for health and relief from a rare eye condition and its symptoms. For Sarah and her family, we thank you for the healing that you have given to Nadine. We pray for Catherine's sister, Patricia, for her health and relief from pers persistent back pain. We pray for healing for Michelle, who has a reoccurrence of breast cancer. We pray for Donna, who has brain cancer, dear Lord. We pray for healing for her. And we pray for Catherine's special intention as well. I ask that we pray for the health of my family, especially my granddaughter, Sarah, and uh, for my daughter, Maureen, and her family, that they're protected from the virus. We pray for the health of my wife, Sharon, and we pray for Michaela Reyes. I got an update on her. Uh, she's been suffering from uh, breast cancer, stage four breast cancer. Um, she's had two operations so far and uh, needs another one, but uh, she's doing well. She's really doing well. Thank you, Lord, for that. Lena May asked to pray for her husband, and we pray for Lena May's health, dear Lord, that uh, she suffers from some health problems, Lord, and we pray for healing for her and relief from her suffering. And we pray for Lena May's uh, special intention. Bernie Grant asked to pray for him, his health, for his family, especially his mother. And we pray, dear Lord, that Bernie gets back to work real soon. And when he does, everything goes smoothly for him. Elder Millennial asked to pray for his family, especially his mother Celeste and his niece. And we pray for success in Elder Millennial studies. Karen Kurlanovich asked to pray for her children and grandchildren, especially Jana and Francis. John is her daughter. Francis is their granddaughter. We pray for them. And we pray for Karen's health, dear Lord. She suffers a lot of pain, and we pray that you relieve her pain and bring about a healing for her. Millie asked to pray for her son, Andrew, that he comes closer to you. Linda Paxos asked to pray for her family. And Ketzerga asked to pray for her and her special intention. Joanne Manaski asked to pray for her daughter, Erin, and Aaron's husband. We pray for their health, dear Lord. We pray for uh, Joanne's brother, Paul, and for uh, her son, Corey, and we pray for the health of Cruz. Stephanie Acario asked to pray for her. We pray for Paul Collins. He suffer We pray for his health. He suffers from asthma, Lord, and we pray for his brother, Phil. They both have health problems, Lord, and we pray that you relieve them of those health problems and grant them a healing. We pray for Paul's special intention. We pray for Paul's children and for a supervisor at work who suffers from cancer. Catherine Salcedo asks to pray for all of those with addictions as she suffers from an addiction, Lord. So we pray for Catherine, we pray for her husband, and for Bianca and Rodrigo. Stefan Bennett asks to pray for all of our spiritual fathers who are guiding their flocks during this very trying, trying time, dear Lord. I pray for Father Gregory and his ministry at St. Michael's, my parish and my priest. I ask that you pray for uh, uh, Father uh, Constantinos, the director of the St. Irene Orthodox Orphanage and Mission in Kenya, doing great work there, dear Lord. We pray that it continues and flourishes. We pray for Father Antipas and his ministry in Nairobi, Kenya. And again, he's doing great work, dear Lord. We pray that... Uh, that that continues. We pray for his, the success of his ministry. We pray for Father Antipas's family, especially his daughter, Gloria, who uh, is in university now. We pray for the ministry of Father Emmanuel at St. Sophia's in Kenya again, dear Lord. The church is doing a lot of work in Kenya. We pray for the church and its work there. And we pray for Father Demetrios. And Stefan asks to pray for the... Uh, that we pray for those who are sick, both physically and spiritually, Lord. And we ask the Lord's mercy on all of us sinners. Amen. 
Anna Gennaro asks to pray for the health of Catherine. We pray for Joseph, her brother, that he's protected from the fires and his hearing improves. And uh, Anna also asks to pray for Daniel, her son-in-law, that he comes to you in faith with his family. And we pray for uh, Anna's special intention. We pray that Anna finds affordable and suitable housing in Washington State so she can be near her daughter and grandchildren. Joe Barbera asks to pray for Janice and Jean, his sister and brother-in-law, and for Bud and Loretta, his brother and sister-in-law. We pray for their health, dear Lord. Stuart Jones asks to pray for his health and the health of his mother and brother. David Fox asks to pray for the health of Daniel and his family, for Damien and his wife, and for the health of Aunt Sylvia. She has health problems, Lord. We pray that you heal her and relieve her of her suffering. And we pray for David as he recovers from a broken foot. Wilson Salviejo asks to pray for him, for his mother Gregoria, for his brother Donald, for his nephews Ken and Kyer, for his sister-in-law Rochelle, for his Aunt Rose, for his mother's caregiver Stella. We pray that you protect them from all harm and sickness, especially the coronavirus. And we pray for Mary Chu, who's passed away, dear Lord, from a lymphoma. We pray, dear Lord, that she has found eternal life with you. Amen. Stefan Bennett asks to pray for his children. Christy, Kara, Justin, Kayla, and Warren. We pray for uh, Stefan's wife, Kendra. And we pray for Stefan himself, that you keep him safe during his many travels. Stacy Bellis asks to pray for the health of Amy. We pray for Stacy's husband, Brian, and for their children, Yanni, Kiriakos, Anastasia, Yakovos, and Mihalis. We pray for the health of her brother-in-law. Jay Russell asks to pray for Tim and Debbie Moses for their health. And Debbie had... Uh, eye surgery earlier this week, Lord, and it was, it came out good, uh, Jay tells me, so we thank you for that. We thank you for that successful eye surgery. Well, we also pray, dear Lord, for the health of Mia Wagner, for Arabella Wagner-Rawlings. We pray that little Jackson stays cancer-free, and we pray for Elijah, not doing well, Lord. So we, he has cancer, a little boy, 10 years old, maybe. And we pray, dear Lord, that you heal him, Return him to us and relieve him of his suffering. Amen. We pray for the health of Tom Gall. We pray for Jim Jackson. We pray for Carl Johnson. He suffers from cancer, Lord, and his cancer has metastasized. So he has to go on to uh, uh, chemotherapy, Lord. We pray that you heal him through that chemotherapy. Amen. And relieve his suffering. We pray for the health of John Etcher. We pray for Don, who suffers from colon cancer, Lord. We pray for healing for Don. We pray for Claire Routing, who suffers from cancer and lung problems. Lord, we pray for healing for her, that you relieve her of her suffering and her anxiety. And uh, she asks us to pray for Father James Rosselli, who suffers from cancer. He's suffering from an infection now and pneumonia. He's in the hospital and on oxygen. We pray, dear Lord, that you, you relieve him of his suffering and bring him back home to us and so he can return to his ministry. We pray for that. Elena Sheldahl asks us to pray that she continues to trust in our Lord. And I have the same prayer for myself. Alione asks to pray for her husband and children. And Deborah asks to pray for her grandchildren, especially the youngest, Tatiana. For Kristen, who suffers from thyroid cancer. And Deborah has a loved one who suffers from an addiction. And we pray for that loved one. And... Deborah. Katerina Pappas asks to pray for her husband Thomas. Maria Kukidakis for her grandson. Alita Hagos for the health of Manal. And we pray for Alita's children as well. Rob King asks to pray for his children and grandchildren that they come to you in faith, dear Lord. Strengthen their faith, dear Lord. We pray for that. And we pray for uh, Rob's two sisters, Dixie and Virginia. And we pray that uh, Dixie is able to overcome her addiction. And uh, we pray for uh, Greg, who's been diagnosed with Lou Gehrig's disease, that's ALS. And we pray for healing for him and relief from his suffering. And we pray for Rob as well. We pray for Michael and Kelly Hatton for their health and the health of their daughter. We pray for the health of Art James. And we, uh, Laurie Miller asks us to pray for Jessica, who suffers from kidney failure, Lord. We pray for her, for healing for her. Stravula Batskos asks to pray for the health of Marie and for her father, Simeon, who suffers from uh, 
cancer, dear Lord. We pray for healing for him. And uh, we pray that he gets stronger. We pray for that. We pray for Demetrios, who's going to have uh, major surgery coming up. And we pray, dear Lord, that uh, that surgery is successful and that he has a good recovery. Amen. Connie Devados has to pray for her children and grandchildren, that they come to you in faith, dear Lord, for that. We pray, and we pray that they come closer to you. We pray for the health of Evangelina. We pray for healing for Jeff, Gigi, Kathy, and Jeannie. And we pray for a miracle healing for Annie. Annie suffers from a brain tumor, dear Lord. And uh, we, we pray that you heal her. We, uh, Connie asks to pray for the members of our armed forces and our first responders. And she has a special intention that we are praying for. Nellie Cartvelli asked to pray for Cotney, and we pray for uh, Nellie, dear Lord, that you heal her eyes and restore her vision to her. For this we pray. We pray for Stel Yo. We pray that you keep him safe and protected at work. We pray that you relieve his uh, anxiety and worry. We pray for his special intention. And we pray for his friend and my friend, Sultana, and her family, uh, we pray for their health and well-being. We pray that they come to you in faith. And we pray for Stelio's brother, Peter, that he finds a, a, a better way to make a living uh, for himself so he can support his family. His business, his startup business, wasn't going real well, dear Lord. So we pray for Peter. Luana asked to pray for Aunt Benita and her health. We pray for James Grass. And we pray for the health of Luana's mother. Luana's mother suffers from cancer. We pray for healing for her. And we pray, dear Lord, for uh, that you protect and keep Luana safe. We pray for that. Colleen asked to pray for the health of Clay and for Sheila and Stephanie and for her special intention. David Sauls asked to pray for the Aid and El Assad families and Shaz and Zephrine. They're all in Syria and in Lebanon. We pray for their protection. We pray for the special intention of Father Antipas. We pray for the health of Dr. Nagala, for the health of Maria Shalakova. We pray for Fatima Muhammad, that she stays strong in her faith. Christopher Bundros asked to pray for him. We do pray for him, dear Lord. And we pray for his family, Shirley, Christopher, Joseph, Matthew, and Faith. And we pray that all of our families stay strong in their faith for you and you. And we pray for the health of John, Liza, John, Carrie, Gibran, Annabelle, and Gregory. We pray for Maura. She suffers from cancer, Lord. We pray that you give Maura a healing. Amen. We pray for Michael, Michael, Gabrielle, Andrew, Joanna, Zoe, and Anthony. We pray, dear Lord, that they come closer to the church and closer to you. We pray for the health of Sony. We pray that you uh, protect her from the coronavirus. We pray for Marcia, who also suffers from cancer and from blood pressure problems, Lord. We pray, dear Lord, that you heal her. We pray for that. We thank you for her husband and her two daughters who have taken such good care of her. Um, and we thank you for them. And uh, we pray for her daughter, Rachel, who had to leave Marcia and go back to her apartment in San Antonio. We pray for her, dear Lord, and we pray uh, for Marsha's uh, son, um, who lives in Arizona with his family. Kurt Lytle asked to pray for the health of Betty Baird. We pray for his daughters, Kristen, Rachel, and Nicole. We pray for their health and protection. We pray for Gail and her health. We pray for Jane, Father Benedict, the monks of the Holy Cross Monastery, for Christina and Jakarta and her children, we pray for the health of Coach Josh Harris and for Father Emmanuel. And we pray for Kurt, dear Lord. We pray that uh, as Kurt enters a, a, a new business, that he is successful. And we pray for Nina, who is uh, suffering or just contracted the COVID-19 virus. And uh, we pray for her, that she has a, a very mild case, gets over it really quickly. And she lives at home with her uh, parents, and her brother. We pray that they do not contract the virus. And if they do, it's only a mild case, dear Lord. Only a mild case. We pray for that. Amen. 
Now, Albert Brashard asked to pray for him. He has a, an open wound. He has a, a diabetic ulcer on his foot. And if that's not healed, oh Lord, that could lead to an amputation. Very, very serious. So we pray for him. Please bring him a healing, Lord. Amen. Albert also asked to pray for David, who suffers from pancreatic cancer. We pray for David's uh, wife, Sharon, and their son, Joshua. We pray for Mary, who suffers from dementia. We pray for the health of Joseph. Robert Ryan asked to pray for Kathy Sanders and Kathy Kovac, both of whom suffer from cancer. Lord, we pray that you heal them. We pray for Bridget, who's very, very worried and distressed over her daughter's uh, unhealthy lifestyle, dear Lord. We pray for the daughter that uh, she makes better decisions in her life and that she uh, comes closer to you and receives your guidance. We pray for Bridget, that you comfort her and uh, relieve her anxiety. Robert also asked to pray for those with thoughts of loneliness and anxiety. We pray for all of those who suffer from depression, Lord. So common, so common. And uh, we pray especially in this regard for Robert, Robert Ryan. We pray for Bob Payne, who suffers from kidney failure and from uh, cancer, Lord. We pray for healing for him, even though the doctors have only given him about three months to live. Well, you can heal him, Lord, and we know that. So we ask you to do just that. Bring him back to us. And we pray for Bob's uh, wife, Penny, that you console and comfort her and that you relieve her anxiety. We pray for Leo Fox, who suffered a stroke, but he's getting better, Lord. He's progressing, and we thank you for the progress that he has made. Bessie Carnos asked to pray for Effie, her mother, for her health. Um, and she appears to be getting stronger from her heart problems, Lord, through that medication. And so we pr thank you for that. And we pray that that defibrillator will be put and planted soon, dear Lord. Amen. Darlene Ann asked to pray for Jordan and for Felicia and for Felicia's unborn child, her unborn son. We pray for him, dear Lord. Vicki Winter asked to pray for the health of her parents, Martha and, and Jimmy. And we pray that you relieve Martha's uh, pain, and we pray that she will not need any hip surgery. We pray for Vicky's husband, Earl, and we pray for his business. We pray for the health of Jane Robbins and Ann Hawkins. We pray for Vicky as she recovers from a broken arm. Earl, Earl Winter, Vicky's husband, asks to pray for Drew, who suffers from brain cancer, Lord, and we pray for healing for Drew. Stacy Uano asks to pray for Bonita, her sister, who suffers from an addiction. And we pray for Bonita, that she can overcome her addiction, Lord. We pray for Stacy and Bonita's sister, Barbara, and her family. And we pray for their uh, mother, Kathleen, who suffers from lung problems, Lord. And we pray that you heal her lungs. We pray for uh, Kathleen's husband, Dennis, who suffers from diabetes. We pray for his health. Um, Ruthie Johnson asks to pray for her family especially her daughter Katie and Katie's two small children. And uh, we pray for the health of uh, Ruthie's husband and for her brother Jim. We pray for Michael, that he has an increase in faith and comes closer to you. We pray for Philip. Philip suffers from an addiction, Lord, and we pray that uh, through your healing grace he can overcome that addiction. And we pray for uh, Ruthie's uh, niece, Tricia, and her family, Matthew and Kevin. Christina Hunter asks us to pray for her parents, Tamara and Doranell. We pray especially for Christina's mother, uh, who has health problems, Lord. We pray for healing for her. We pray for Robert Edwards, who's recovering from a stroke, dear Lord. We pray that you restore to him the use of his left hand and left arm. We pray for Alexander Mihalichenko and his two brothers, Serge and Nicholas. And we pray for Noah who's recovering from a broken leg. And Joseph Worth asked to pray for his brother, Daniel. Amen. Now it's time to go around and see if there's any other prayer requests. So, put them in that comment section, folks. And Robert Ryan. Please pray that I return to normal sleeping. Amen. 
You know, Lord, for someone who suffers from depression, sleep deprivation is, t is, is a, a terrible, terrible thing. We pray that you uh, give Robert some peace and let him sleep. Let him sleep, dear Lord. Amen. Joyce Marie asks to pray for Jolene's knees and for Jeremiah's lungs. And Lord, we pray for uh, Jolene and Jeremiah that you restore to them uh, good health. We pray for that. Amen. And Ramona Antonesi, pray for my health. Possible psoriatic arith er psoriatic arthritis or erythrita and T-cell lymphoma. Dear Lord, we pray for Ramona. We pray that you heal her. And uh, it looks like she's got some serious stuff going on there, Lord. So we, we pray that you heal her and we leave her symptoms and we leave her suffering. Amen. <clears throat> and we pray for her, uh, Ramona's daughter's health and protect uh, and we protect her daughter from the virus and autoimmune disease as she has an immunodeficiency, a genetic disorder. Well, we pray for uh, Ramona's daughter, dear Lord, that you protect her from infections. That's the big thing, Lord. Protect her system can't do it on its own. She needs your help, dear Lord. Protect her from infections, just like you protect Luke. Amen. Robert Ryan, prayers ascending for all of our intentions. Amen. Good evening, Joseph. Joe Barbera. And over here. And uh, Marsha asks us to pray for uh, Violet, a premature baby, two pounds in the NICU. This is my cousin, cousin's grandbaby. Well, Lord, we pray for Violet. You know, we prayed for a similar case so about a year ago for another Violet. And uh, so we pray, dear Lord, for this Violet that uh, she puts on strength. She gets stronger and uh, she keeps eating and eating and eating. We pray for that. And, and being a grand, my granddaughter, my eldest granddaughter, we had the same problem, dear Lord, uh, that she wasn't premature, but she was a failure to thrive. And I remember holding her in my arms and how hard it was for all of us to watch her that you know, being fed through that tube that went down into her stomach. So Lord, we pray for them. And Father Antipas, Brothers and sisters in Christ, I'm so glad to catch up with you. Timing is quite tricky these days. Well, Father, it's nice to have you with us. Amen. And Marcia also has to pray for the wife of a relative reposed earlier this week. And um, dear Lord, we pray for Pam, that she has found eternal life with you. Amen. And Ruthie says, I'm praying for you all, but I have to go to bed. I have to get up early in the morning. Amen. And I think we've had all the prayers there and there. So, dear Lord, we ask that you remember all of those that we, we have prayed for this evening. And if I've missed any, Lord, well, we pray for them to remember them. Um, and we ask that you extend your healing hands on all of those who are suffering physically, spiritually, and emotionally, Lord. We pray for your healing, your grace, and your love as we give you our love. And Lord, we pray that the Most Holy Virgin Mary, the Theotokos, adds our prayers and intentions to her prayers when she prays. We pray that St. Paul the Confessor, our saint of the day, adds uh, our prayers and intentions to his prayers when he prays. O Holy Father, Heavenly Physician of our souls and bodies, who has sent your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to heal all our ailments and deliver us from death, 
visit and heal your servants, granting them release from pain and restoration to health and vigor, that they may give thanks unto you and bless your holy name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Well, folks, I'll see you again tomorrow morning for morning prayers, 8 a.m. Eastern Time here in the U.S., and then again tomorrow night at uh, 9 p.m. for the Gospel Minute Live, and we'll go on with uh, St. Paul and the Acts of the Apostles. So what, uh, we're chapter 19, what verse did I say? What verse did I say we'd begin at? Let me see here. I have my sticky note, don't worry. And we'll be starting at uh, Acts chapter 19, verse 11. So mark your Bibles, get your pencils out, make little notes. So until then, remember, there's two things you've always got to remember, friends. Two things. One, God loves you, and two, I love you. So, until tomorrow, may God bless us all. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord.